In this problem, we're asked to convert the iterated integral into polar coordinates and then evaluate the newly created iterated integral. So we're given an iterated integral in Cartesian coordinates, the integral from 0 to 2 and the integral from 0 to x of 1 dy dx. So first we want to convert this into polar coordinates. So the best way I've found to do that is to make a sketch a graph of our region. So we can look at this. So we see that our x value is ranging from 0 to 2. So we're going to be on the right hand side of our um, axis, or the right hand side. And then our y value is ranging from 0 to x. So we're going to be in the top right and then below the, the equation y equals x. So we can graph y equals x. And that's this line. So our y value is ranging from 0 to x. So from the x-axis to this line. So you can kind of draw some lines there. And then our x value is going to be ranging from 0 to 2. So if we just mark 2 there, we can just extend our equate of the line x equals 2 is right there. And we want everything within this triangle. Okay, so this is our region R that we're going to be integrating over. And we want to convert it into polar coordinates. So if we look at how we would be ranging our theta, so our angle, we see that we want to have a lower limit of the equation y equals 0. So just along the x-axis. We want our theta to be greater than that. So, and then we want to increase our theta until we hit the line y equals x. Okay, so now we can use our polar coordinates to look at our theta. So, I'll just write theta. So we know that y is equal to r sine of theta. And we want that when it's equal to 0. So we want when y is equal to 0. But we want this to be true for all values of r along our x-axis between 0 and 2. So clearly we don't want r to just be equal to 0. So we can divide by r and just look at when sine of theta is equal to 0. So and sine of theta is equal to 0 when theta is equal to n pi. So sine is equal to 0 when we're at 0. So when n is equal to 0, or when n equals 1, we're also at 0, or at 2 pi, we're back at our starting point. So, but we, we want um, our theta to be just in the positive x direction. And we'll be in the negative direction if n is equal to 1 or an odd number. So we want our theta to be actually 2n pi so that we're only in the positive direction. Okay, so now we'll look at when y is equal to x. So that means that r sine of theta is equal to r cosine theta. We can divide both sides by r cosine theta and we get tangent of theta is equal to 1. 
And we know that that's true when theta is equal to pi fourths plus n pi. So that means that we're going to be, when we're at pi fourths, we're at this positive x direction, positive x and positive y. And when we're at pi fourths plus pi, we're in the negative direction. So we want to, again, rule out all our negative directions. And then when we're at pi fourths plus 2 pi, we're back where we started. So we want this to really be pi fourths plus 2n pi. OK, so now um, we want to think about what would happen if, if we had theta equals 0 as our lower limit and theta equals pi fourths plus 2n or plus 2 pi, which would be 9 fourths, 9 pi fourths. So that would mean that we'd be starting at pi equals 0, going all the way around the circle, and ending up here. So we would be including all of this extra space. So we don't want to do that. We want our region to be just from our line y equals 0 to y equals x, and nothing more. So we could choose theta equals 2 pi as our lower limit, and then theta equals 9 pi over 4 as our upper limit, and we would get the same results. But for simplicity, we'll just let n equals 0 in both of these. So we want our theta to run from 0 to pi over 4. So that means we're just sweeping over this area. Okay. So now if we look at our R values, clearly we want to start when R is equal to 0, since that's the origin. And if we look at just, say, when theta is equal to 0, we want to include all R values between 0 and R equals 2. So that would be just this line along the x-axis. But now then, when theta is equal to pi over 4, we want to include all values of r that are between 0 and the line where x is equal to 2. So when our radius is equal to 2, we're on the circle that includes this point 2, which ends up being somewhere like around there, just roughly. So we actually need to include more values of r when we're at theta equals pi over 4. So, but luckily we have this equation, x equals 2, to help us determine what value of r we're at for any given theta. So we need to use our equation x equals 2 to determine what our value, what our uh, upper bound for our r is. So x equals 2 implies that our cosine of theta is equal to 2. Now we want our r value to depend on theta. So we want to solve for r and get some function in terms of theta so that when we know what angle we're at, we'll know how far out we need to increase our r. So we can solve for r pretty easily. We get r is equal to 2 divided by cosine theta. 1 over cosine theta is secant theta. So we can just write it as r equals 2 secant theta. OK. so. We've already determined that our lower limit is r equals 0. And now our upper limit is 2 secant theta. So we have both of our bounds are accounted for. Now we can 
now we just have to look at our element of area, dy dx, and convert that into polar coordinates, which we know dy dx is r dr d theta. Okay, so we have So our iterated integral in Cartesian coordinates transforms into the iterated integral from 0 to pi over 4 and from 0 to 2 secant theta of r dr d theta. Okay, so we can evaluate this integral in the normal way. We'll evaluate the integral in the interior, which is from 0 to 2 secant theta of r dr. The integral of r dr is r squared over 2. So we get the integral from 0 to pi over 4, of r squared over 2, evaluated from 0 to secant theta. Plug in when r is equal to secant theta, we get secant squared of theta over 2. And then when r is equal to 0, our value, our function is 0. So we just have secant squared of theta over 2. Okay, so the integral of secant squared is, uh, oh, sorry, this is 2 secant theta, 2 secant theta, and then 2 secant theta squared is 4 secant squared theta over 2. Okay, so the integral of secant squared is tangent of theta, so if uh, you want to double check that, you can just go ahead and evaluate the, or take the derivative of tangent of theta, and you'll get secant squared. So we get Two tangent theta evaluated from 0 to pi over 4, since 4 over 2 simplifies to just 2. Okay, so we know that tangent of pi over 4 is 1, so we get 2, and then tangent of 0 is 0, so our integral evaluates to 2. So we converted our iterated integral into polar coordinates, and then we evaluated it and found that equals 2.